In the 21st century, the concept of women having a period or menstrual cycle involving ovulation is far from mind-blowing. But if we take a step back from what has been normalized to us through our connection with our own species, a lot of aspects of human female reproduction, like cycle length, frequency, and even our advertisement of fertility, are far from the norm. I'm not normal. Estrous cycles are recurring periods of sexual receptivity and fertility in female mammals that are induced by reproductive hormones and ultimately result in pregnancies after mating. For most of the around 6,500 known mammal species, the period of estrus is the only time animals will actually mate and it's often accompanied by both physical and behavioral changes in females. To name just a couple examples, estrus displays can be seen in female baboons whose genitals become red and inflamed when fertile, known as sexual swelling. Dogs and cats also experience extreme behavioral changes when in heat. So how can we tell, just from looking at a woman, when she's fertile? From wrist size, to breast size, to face shape, to ankle swelling, a lot of people seem to think they've got it figured out. Trick question. You just can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. Visually, there are actually no indications of female fertility or ovulation. And humans are receptive to mating at all points in their cycles. This is especially mysterious since mating without achieving a pregnancy is a significant wasted investment in energy and resources for males. Interestingly, of approximately 6,500 other mammal species, humans are one of only 32 mammals and the only group living primate to conceal their ovulation. And that brings us to one daunting question. Why did human females evolve to conceal their ovulation? I don't know! I don't know! <laughs> For the vast majority of mammal species, females advertise ovulation and humans don't. I have a lot of experience of being an estrus. Um, in fact, am I right now, gentlemen? I want to be a true intellectual man of the future, become a cuckold. Those are the instructions from CNN. I'm talking to you about female rivalry promote long-term pair bonding. Prevention of infanticide. <laughs> okay, concealed ovulation. Concealed ovulation. Of course it's genetically programmed. <laughs> Today we're going to take a deeper dive into some of the theories behind why this unique trait of concealed ovulation evolved in humans. First we're going to chat about the pair bonding and male investment hypothesis. Being a single mother is hard. Foraging and protection become much more challenging after the birth of a human infant. So there are evolutionary advantages of having a man around to raise a child and help the mother. A study conducted by Krems et al. in 2021 found that male investment in time and resources can actually increase offspring fitness by over 35%. If a man doesn't know when he will be able to reproduce, he is forced to stay with the mate and provide even when she is not fertile. Human females are fertile for about three days every menstrual cycle. And if males knew exactly which days that female is fertile, she might only receive investment in resources and protection during that part of her cycle. A consequence of concealed ovulation is that we are constantly sexually receptive. We have sex all the time. We have sex all the time. Including for pleasure when we're not fertile. Whereas most other animals are only interested in sex during estrus periods. What nothing to do with you! Increased sex results in the formation of pair bonds between mates. And the fact that men want to ensure that women are not mating with other males may be the reason we have seen monogamy and marriage develop in most human cultures. This is a controversial theory that has been subject to much scrutiny. In order for a trait like concealed ovulation to be selected for, there must first be variation in the population. It does not make much sense that males would prefer mates with concealed ovulation, which they have to continuously invest in if there were also females who displayed fertility that they could only invest in during a few days a month. Isn't that time of the month again? The 
The next idea we're going to chat about is the female rivalry hypothesis. This hypothesis was developed as an alternative to the male investment hypothesis and suggests that perhaps the evolution of concealed ovulation had less to do with males and more to do with other females. I hate her. I hate her! The female rivalry hypothesis suggests that since other females were not able to detect when they were ovulating, there was an adaptive benefit of concealed ovulation that may have resulted from avoidance of costly intrasexual aggression among females. This could have resulted in females with concealed ovulation having a higher reproductive fitness compared to those who revealed their ovulation. Essentially what this theory boils down to is if other women aren't perceiving you as a threat, you have a higher chance at reducing competition and securing the better mates. The concept of extra pair paternity or cuckoldry is another hypothesis that could explain why females have evolved to have concealed ovulation. Cuckoldry is when a female deceives a male and convinces him to raise a child that is not genetically his own. While rates of extra pair paternity are relatively low today, data may be skewed as a result of modern day contraceptives. Heard you went on the pill. Concealed ovulation may allow females to mate with multiple partners. This will allow her to copulate with a male with better genes, but raise her offspring with a father that has better paternal investments. In these scenarios, this does not just benefit the mother, but also the offspring and the offspring's chances of survival. The extra pair male also benefits as his genes are successfully transferred into the next generation without having to parent his own offspring. Is your father available? He's not my father. In some primate populations like our close ancestors, chimpanzees, if an alpha chimpanzee suspects that a baby in his troop was sired by another male, he will likely kill them in an act of infanticide. Concealed ovulation reduces paternity certainty, ultimately reducing infanticide. This will ensure that offspring survive into adulthood and pass on the genes of their biological father. While this topic of concealed ovulation is central to human reproduction and how we evolved to become what we are today, it is not a popular area of current research. However, several foundational studies on estrus in human females provide some empirical evidence which suggests that perhaps ovulation is not as concealed as we once believed it to be. In the first study, to figure out if we've truly lost estrus, Jeffrey Miller and colleagues decided to conduct an experiment in one of the most sanitary labs available. The neighborhood strip club. The local strip club. This study followed 18 strippers from Albuquerque who self-reported their tips per shift and menstrual cycles over 60 days. Interestingly, they found that normally cycling women who were not on birth control earned an average of 335 US dollars per shift during fertile estrus phase. 260 US dollars per shift during luteal phase and 185 dollars per shift during menstruation. Whereas there was no significant difference observed in women who were on the pill. While the small sample size and self-reporting done in the study are limitations, this study provided economic evidence that men have a preference for strippers who are ovulating. Is he falling in love with the stripper? This could suggest that estrus has not been completely concealed and that women maybe leak or signal fertility status cues through interactions. It was proposed that females may have not completely lost estrus as males may be able to detect non-physical cues of when a woman is fertile. To explore this, four women who were not using hormonal contraceptives were asked to sleep with a different shirt for three nights during different phases of her menstrual cycle. Shirt! 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 Unsurprisingly, the saliva samples from the 37 men who smelled the different shirts showed higher levels of testosterone after smelling the shirt that was worn during the female's fertile phase of her cycle. This suggests that males are actually more attracted to women when they are fertile, showing that maybe females have not completely lost estrus. Now, you stuck around and watched our whole video, so we're going to give you some things to take home. Number one, at some point in evolutionary history, early human females that concealed ovulation had greater fitness compared to females who displayed their ovulatory status, and we're not completely sure of why.
Number two, the dated research that's available suggests that there may remain discrete signs of estrus in human females. But as this is not a current area of research, concealed ovulation should definitely be taken out of the evolutionary studies vault. Future research should explore the physiological signs that men are able to detect when it comes to female fertility. And number three, the most important takeaway is that when it comes to reproduction in mammals, humans are truly the exception and not the rule. Human ovulation is extremely unique in comparison to other animals and even our close relatives. For such a unique evolutionary trait experienced by humans, why isn't concealed ovulation more widely discussed? Considering the fact that we are one of 32 mammal species that conceal our ovulation, why aren't we learning about this in health class? The female Homo sapien hides her ovulation for reasons that we're unsure of. We don't sexually signal bright pink when we mingle, which leads to us making more love. We can test in a lab or a strip club ain't bad for subtle signs in smell and in sight. Still, the queer fact remains about us sapiens. Concealed ovulation's all right. Concealed ovulation's all right.